I'll be back for another episode of Explicit Content. I got my boy, DJ Mike P. What up, what up? My boy, how you feeling there? I'm just right. We here in Chicago, man. Different scenery. Yeah. Uh, Mike P. Hometown. What's new? What's, what you got going on? Not much, man. Doing these radio mixes, virtual stuff, clubs opening back up. So I'm just, I'm just trying to get money while I can, bro. Cause once this little second wave kick in, bro, this shit's gonna shut back down. Yeah, yeah, that's what we was talking about. That's what's going on in Atlanta right now. Yeah, a lot of the clubs stop opening back up, but I, I don't think everybody on the same page. This shit's over. Yeah, it's done. Fuck the country up. So how was the transition? You feel me? Back from or to virtual? You feel me? And then back from virtual to right now? Um, I think the transition was a little. It was pretty cool because everybody wanna be outside anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like. Hell, I'm just glad to be DJing in front of people because Instagram Live is cool, but the numbers don't be the same. You know what I'm saying? It just be a lot of different stuff in there. Every time I get on, it's like they cut me off because of the audio copyright issue. You know what I'm saying? So no, it's just the whole. That's why I did it one time. Yeah, bro, I did it twice, man. Um, and now other than that, I've been doing virtual parties, but they've been on Zoom, so that way it ain't no issues. It's a crowd there, call it a day, virtual prom, graduation, all that stuff, man. So, like you said, uh. Second wave coming soon. How long do you think you're going to be in the clubs? Man, I think I'm going to be spending in the clubs probably until like September. You're not like scared? I ain't really scared. I think it's because like, we young. Okay. So it's like, out of our age group, only what? Not even 1% yeah. or something. Low ass number, you know what I'm saying? And also too, like, I ain't in a situation bro, where like a lot of young people, they live with their parents or they home from college and they with their mom, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you putting them at jeopardy and shit. Or just anybody that's older, you know what I'm saying? So. I don't have that issue, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of be out the way too, though. Fish pump motherfuckers, keep it moving, G. You are masking, though. Right, keep it moving, bro. So, alright, uh, let's take it back. I knew you for a long time. Facts. Um, that nigga, like, five, six years. Well, I mean, he's a short. I've been looking out to this nigga for a minute. What you 23, right? 24? Yeah, I'm, 20, I'm 26 now. Dude. For real? Crazy, G. Wait, 26. So, like I said, he's about four years older than me. I've been looking out to him for a distance. Um, Facts. I remember you started. Speaking of virtual, you started with the, uh, the you streaming, streaming, you yeah, streaming, yeah, the high school type. So you yeah. had all the stories. Tell you want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, that shit was actually really dope, man. And it's crazy that all of this that's going on in the world is kind of what brought me to you stream. It was just more so like I was I was out protesting in 2014, Eric Gardner whole situation, right? Boom, I'm protesting. I get arrested like six days after my birthday. And, like I'm walking away from the protest, right, to my car. They come out of nowhere and just arrest me off some bullshit. I spent 18 hours, right, with CPD in a little holding cell and shit. And they take me out to 103rd, to the sheriff and shit like that, right? And all of this shit. Um, I get out, get my first crib, right? I moved to High Park because I'm from High Park originally um, as a kid. And then literally, I'm in the crib in High Park. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pay my rent. I had money saved, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it was just like, you know, as a DJ... We know what gigs we got, but you know what I'm saying? You still want to like, you want to guarantee like, man, I got to make a thousand dollars just to pay my rent. I had a little ass studio, bro, in High Park, G. Right back in with it. And uh, I hopped on Ustream and I just like was DJing. And really, I got it from my church. My church has been doing this Ustream thing for years, bro, before it was a thing. And uh, this was 2015, I believe. And um, yeah, man, it, what, what it was was like the popular kids that I DJ that Sweet Sixteen for, they either follow me on Instagram or on Twitter. So, look, so I they knew I was zero though. Yeah, exactly. So, so through shit. Jack and Jip, so there was a bunch of popular kids, right. like top tier kids. They looked <laughs> Whitney Young, Kenwood, or Simeon. They were top tier kids, you know what I'm saying? And it was really dope because, and I credit a lot of stuff to them in CPS because when I did the Ustream, like, like I said, man, they really were on Twitter like, man, Mike DJing on Ustream, he going crazy. It just happened to be, bro, in 2015, it was a fucking storm for like a week. It was just raining hard as hell. So everybody was in the fucking crib, bro. It was raining hard and it was snowing hard, bro. And everybody was in the crib, bro. And I remember this shit like it was yesterday, G. One day it was 30 people on there. The second day it was 1,000. The third day it was 4,000. And then that fucking... Yeah. Last day, bro, it was a hundred thousand motherfucking people That's the thing on that the time. Party, bro. Imagine on Twitter, bro. So you feel it was really like you was at a crazy. party, and, and I say this to say like niggas like you and me, you feel yeah. me, the head of our time type shit. That's this is the way of the world right now. Bro, you feel me? Niggas was doing this shit when we had no idea. Whole Facebook Live, bro. Yeah, you could not go Facebook Live and Instagram Live in 2015. Title had just started being a uh, streaming app, so now you're talking about streaming, just streaming, bro. 
and other. I'm not saying that they saw me do some shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that, but just be like you said, my bad. Being ahead of your time, bro, is like it can sometimes be a gift and a curse, bro. And I thank God that it was a gift because it sure. ended up, like, bro. I'm still getting calls from people just off of that. Like that's how a lot of these people know my name. And now uh, you take the same popular kids, bro, that blew me up on Twitter, right? By tweeting lyrics and sharing a link, right? I didn't even have to ask or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Now what happens is they go off, they go to college, they be somebody great, they a president at their school. Now what they do? They then flew me out to their school to spin. They school love me. They graduate. I'm still spinning there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like it's so many cases like that, bro. That, that like those gigs has just been like a, a strict connection to you. Street. It's like super fucking dope, G. It's real shit. So, all right. Uh, speaking on school and shit, I know you didn't go to college. Uh, nah, I did candy cane for three semesters. Yeah, I did candy cane so, for three semesters. My fault. But okay. it don't count though. Yeah, that's, the, that's what I want to talk about. Because <laughs> no, that's the thing. Like, you know, I went to college for four years. Yeah. And I still tell people, you know, it's your own lane. I want yeah. you to, you feel me, talk about your success. You know what I'm saying? How you can still yeah. be successful or make your way. I, you feel I, me? Do you, do you feel like you, you, you didn't have to go to college? You feel like you didn't need this? You know what I'm saying? Did I you feel need like, that? I feel like I did need to go to college. So, yeah. Even with this whole COVID shit going on, people losing jobs left and right, bro, who went to school. Some school. people who are not losing their job, you know what I'm saying? My girl still got her job, she definitely went to school. Um, but it's just kind of like, I think life and your destiny, bro, is like what matters. You know what I'm saying? Follow your heart. If it's something you really, really want to do, you're going to figure that shit out, bro. If you want that newest bait, whatever, you're going to figure out a way, bro, to get it. You're going to do it legally or illegally, but at the end of the day, you have yeah. one goal to get what? Fucking bait. And guess what? When you get it, you're going to have it, and that's that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the same energy we put into the small things like clothes and cars and jewelry and shit like that. Um, you want to put that into your actual life, man. And that's why I'm saying like, if you go to school, cool. If you don't, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's neither here nor there. Like, but just for me, it just worked out that I didn't have to um, go to school just because I had a real true talent that people fuck with. And they start trying to get paid, bro. You're a real person. That's yeah, what like. Saying. I've been the same dude, bro. I got the same phone number, G. Since yeah. since 2012, bro. Since I was a senior in high school, every prep. Like, come on, like, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's your destiny, bro. But it took a lot of me practicing and learning and researching DJing to figure out what type of DJ I want to be, what lane I want to go. Like we was just talking about the elevator. Yeah. Atlanta's cool, but you know it's a ceiling there. Same here in Chicago. So it's either you hop behind the artist and you make that go, yeah. or you or you don't hop behind the artist and you become your own person and make that go too. Or like me, I was able to do both. So that way when Juice passed, I was still able to keep going because niggas knew me as Mike P. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, oh, that's a nigga that DJ for whoever. You know what I'm saying? That's all about building your brand. Though. Exactly, bro. When you got a brand, bro, you keep, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you go to school or you don't. Have your own brand, which is really your own name. If you're not a DJ or whatever the fuck you want to be, hairstylist, whatever, your name is all you got. So when people know your name, they're going to call your name because they know it's going to be good shit to come with it. When we want a DJ, let's get Mike. We know he's going to be solid. Let's get you. We know, we know we ain't got to worry about him and what he's going to play. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. G. So all right, while you dropping Jim, uh, what you got to say? Like any young DJ, you know, who going to watch this or any young DJ look up to you? Um... Research this shit, man. Don't just look at me and be like, damn, I'm trying to get like Mike P. He got this, he got that. He DJ for this, he DJ for that, he DJ for this person, he DJ for that person. All of that stuff was straight research, bro, and networking. Networking is real big. Like, people think networking is not a thing in the, in the entertainment industry because it's all about having fun, this and the third. But at the end of the day, you got to network because if... If, like, off the strength, I'm going to tell you this, off the strength this weekend, right? Me pulling up at certain clubs just got me secured on certain gigs for next weekend. All I had to do was show my face because I haven't been living in Chicago for a minute. People knew, like, damn, he back. Oh, shit. And it's this COVID shit going on. We the hottest, whatever. Let's go, Mike. You know what I'm saying? That's networking, bro. Yes. Versus just being up in the crib, just like, I'm waiting for people to call me or this and the third. You still want to have that hungry mindset throughout the whole DJ game. You know what I'm saying? And another gem I'm going to leave y'all with is just always create your own lane. 
we all DJ, so technically we all on one expressway. But you could create your own lane that you could say, man, okay, well, I'm going to take on the suburbs. Because the suburbs listen to different shit than the city. You know what I'm saying? Or Atlanta listen to different shit than Chicago. Like you was at your school. Yeah. So it made sense. Let me attack my school. Attack whatever you know you can attack. Whatever audience you know that you are part of, attack it. If you was in high school, you would be DJing at high school. That's what I did. That was the first gig I ever had, bro. It was uh, something called Mom Prom, and then I DJed My Prom. Yeah, I remember I met you on Messiah shit. Yeah, like, yeah, Messiah shit. like I DJ. you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, you got to take over and own whatever it is. So I took over my high school. I was the only DJ DJing everything. When I graduated, I started doing what? The homecomings, the proms. That was a guaranteed bag off that one school, off Urban Prep. And you got three campuses. So now you multiply the bag times three. Because they're going to fuck with you because you're alumni. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just, it's like, all right, cool, I attack that. Now you got a kid that'll leave out of urban prep. He'll transfer and go to another school. Boom, he's going to tell that teacher, man, we need DJ Mike Peep or our homecoming. Nah, I didn't. Back to your name. I didn't added another school on. Now here comes Messiah School. It comes everybody's school now. You know what I'm saying? So, and now it's just the thing, like, you know, if you don't got Mike Peep, you know what I'm saying? So. Create your own lane, your own brand, and then people will just be hungry for more. All right, so you say uh, you're doing homecoming. Yeah. Um, after that, so take it, I'm trying to transition. I remember, because you know we did the, the Taylor Bennett for that. Before it Fast. Was, in um, Atlanta. Yeah, so your first tour was with Taylor Bennett, right? Um, y- yeah, no, it was actually a gospel artist. Okay. Crazy. Uh, uh, Charles Jenkins. Charles Jenkins, okay. Yeah. Hey, me um, just DJing, man. I was just DJing downtown at, it used to be a Hard Rock Hotel on Michigan, it's not that anymore. But I was DJing there for, uh, for Billboard. They had like some little small gospel side event. DJ and uh, yeah, he just connected with me so good. And then too, he was trying to venture off into this whole like, uh, I want to say like Kirk Franklin, but just like, you know how like, it's a different style of gospel. gospel it's yeah, gospel, yeah. but it's different though, you it's know. The, it's the pop gospel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what he was trying to go with, so. Him having a DJ made it look real cool, and we did that. And then I did my uh, official tour tour, though, like tour bus style. That's what you mean with Taylor. With Taylor. Yeah, I did that with Taylor. That's when I see in Atlanta. So what year was that? Man, Taylor, my first joint with Taylor probably was 2017. Okay. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then we did another tour 2018, and I came back out there again. Same venue, Coca Cola. Yeah, right. Shit. Okay. Yeah. So then, then you went to Juice in 2018. 18. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm tour with Taylor, Juice. So, talk about that uh, being a tour DJ. What you think about that? Um, being a I know, tour. Wait, my fault. I'm going to continue. But you know, that's what every DJ thinks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they I don't think that's the tour. like, ooh, that's yeah, the holy grail, man. Uh, being a tour DJ has ups and downs. Um, because when you first get in, depending upon the, the caliber of artists, a lot of people don't just start out with um, you know, a lot of people don't just start out with a top tier artist. Hell, when I started out with Juice, Juice technically wasn't a top tier artist. He was still underground or so whatever like, the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. I remember they. Uh, I had a roommate from. I mean, cut you up. No, you good, you good. I had a roommate from Detroit. He showed me Juice. Yeah. Um, and he was rapping too, but you feel me? He was like, this nigga's up next. Like, he, he, I'm coming, but you feel me? This nigga's right now. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, wait, this nigga from HF. Yeah. I'm in this nigga DM, like, hey, you need a DJ? You feel me? It's that. Yeah. Next thing I know, I see you, him, y'all doing a little video downtown. I'm like, oh, damn, this nigga Mike just took that shit with yeah. me. I knew y'all, you feel me? After that, yeah. that shit was finna go up. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, so, okay, so, okay, so first, right? And we're gonna talk about this. First, being a tour DJ, like I said, man, it's cool. It has ups and downs because um, in 2017, I got called. I got called to DJ on a TV show, and I was doing that Monday through Friday, bro. I was getting 4 a.m., 6 to 8. I was DJing live, at month, not, like nonstop every weekday, right? So it was kind of like, man, if I go and hop on this tour, it was cool for the tour I was doing with Taylor because Taylor only had, I think he had something like 25 dates or something yeah. like that, right? I was like, all right, cool. And we had a nice little break in the 20-something days that I could come home and DJ on the show. That it wouldn't be an issue. But with Juice, he, like, came out the gate, bro. Like, and we got 45 dates. Boom, 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 boom. Off one song, bro. Off Lucy Drink. Boom, 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 boom. So it was kind of like, man, 
the down part of it was that I had to turn down um, DJing on the TV show, which was solely about Mike P. Like that was just me to go and DJ behind the artist now. But I knew that, man, this kid got the potential to really blow. Let's let's get on this wave. Let's make sure that it's solid. You know what I'm saying? And um, it put me on a bigger platform to do festivals, this, that, and the third, right? And it's a great look. It's great content, great footage I got. Um, great accomplishments, I should say. Coachella, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All of this stuff. But at the end of the day, um, the downfall of it is that you as a DJ, you don't get too much of that star shine on you because it's not really about you. It's about the artist. So if we talking about when I said create your own brand, your own lane, thank God that I had that before I met Juice. So that way, when we would go out, I didn't. F I never felt no hatred or jealousness or nothing like that in my heart. Um, I was actually just glad to go and travel to Europe like how we was, going to Australia. Like, you know what I'm saying, going to all these places. Um, so it was like, that was the blessing that I that I received in it all. It was just like, damn, I'm DJing in places I've never been. Y'all was on tour with Nicki. It would take me a long you time. Before Juice. You said who? I said y'all on tour with Nikki too before. Yeah, So man. I'm already knowing yeah, stuff. Like, like relationships even, are all the, you know, yeah, that's, like, that's one of a lifetime type yeah, shit. Yeah, bro, like bumping, bumping, bumping shoulders and shit with these different artists. Um, just like, it's, it's super cool, bro. But at the end of the day, what I always say, bro, about tour DJing, bro, is that you need to get your money. Get your money, get your money, get your money, get your money. And what I mean by get your money is whatever you plan on, you say you want to make, make it. Make it known to management or to the artists, however it works. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's case is different. Hey, I'm trying to make this much per year. Y'all need me like I need y'all. I got his music. I play his music. I know when to cut it out. Energy. I DJ before you come. You know what I'm saying? So it's not. We don't. I don't sit here. I have to explain to you why you need me or why I need y'all. But let's make a mutual understanding. Hey, I'm trying to get paid X, Y, and Z. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, right? Whether you don't have the spotlight on you or you do got the spotlight on you, you have funds. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, to take care of bills, this and the third, because. The type of tour we was doing with Juice was, we was on a literally world tour since I met this kid. The, the, the first event we did was in Sacramento, right? That was on U.S. soil. The second event we did was in uh, Patio Theater, which was here in Chicago, yeah. on U.S. soil. But bro, no cap. After that, we went and spent a whole week in London and in Germany, bro. He only had two shows, but we spent a week between those two places yeah. because... He was doing so many radio interviews and all of this Freestyle stuff with Interscope. Yeah, yeah, bro, you you watched it. Like, we was in London. I forgot the dude's name, but uh, he's a big DJ out there. Juice did a whole freestyle and shit. And, bro, he had just came off the fucking plane, bro. We had never been out the country. None of us. Me, G-Money, um, his uh, Juice girl, his old girl, I should say, not Allie. His old girl and uh, fucking Juice and uh, a fucking label rep, bro. None of us have been out the country, G. He yeah, just did like 12 shit. hours on a plane And Juice just came right out bro Went into the fucking that's radio working, station bro that's And was spinning raw ass freestyles You feel what I'm saying It's like damn So my thing bro is just like At the end of the day bro You want to get your bread Of course it's unfortunate that Juice passed away You yeah, feel what I'm saying sure. So now I had to press the reset button on my career Because it was almost like I dedicated and allocated all of my time. I was not taking no private events. You couldn't book me for no weddings. We was turning down every event. You couldn't if it. You couldn't book me because Juice was so big that yeah, I'm not gonna miss out on Coachella to be doing a Sweet Sixteen in whatever yeah. fucking city. I don't care. Coachella's a big thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you never want to accept certain dates, and then I gotta like tell a, the client on some bogus shit like damn. Last minute, I got to cancel on you. You know what I'm saying? Your event is just important. as important, though, bro, <laughs> yeah, no. as Coachella. It's just that personally, to me, I'm, I want to be on Coachella stage versus at your Sweet 16. 100%. But at the end of the day, if I can work it out, I'm going to be at your Sweet 16. That's why you say, like, oh, man, Mike, a real person. Because, bro, I still be in your backyard, and I still go hop my ass on a plane to go with Juice fucking China, G, to go DJ for whatever thousands of people. Like, at the end of the day, bro, I love DJ. But I'm also smart about my business side. That's what I'm saying. 
you gotta make sure that you get the bread, bro. If you don't get the bread, then you, when 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 it's all said and done like it is now with juice, my fault. Like when it's all said and done now like it is with juice, you could I could have been in a real fucked up position, bro. Like, damn, how I'm gonna make ends meet? Then you got COVID that just came right, juice December. COVID hit March, technically earlier than that, but yeah. we ain't respond until March. And it's kind of like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, in between trying to get gigs instead of third, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a lifestyle change, of course, you know what I'm saying? And it's truly humbling, too. But it, it only, humble pie only turns so bad when you have not been humble. Make sense? For sure. Like, so, like, me being a real person, bro, I ain't really, yeah. when he passed, bro, I was more fucked up on my homie dying than I was off yeah. some, like, damn, no, no. I ain't gonna see no more checks or no more of this type of money, you know what I'm saying? That's real shit I'm saying right now, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, it's just really, just get the bread, man, because then at the end of the day, when you, you know what I'm saying? Or even if I decide to take a different route, like, oh, I can't do this tour shit no more, like, this shit fucking with me, like, yeah. all right, I got savings that I can go and just chill. Yeah, tell them that have like, a savings. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have a savings. That's the thing. Dude. When you said get your bread, I was mostly thinking that's the whole. That's what I'm you saying. Said, too, have your like, money set I'm aside. Saying, like, get the money, get the pay that you want, and have money on the side for a rainy day slash rainy fucking year. This a rainy year for some DJs, nigga. Because no, if you're not sure. a top tier DJ, you're not getting called to the clubs, bro. Because the clubs only know they have X amount of time to be open. Oh, it's a it's a gimmick game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they Trump want to open this country, then the fucking results come back. We spike it. Oh, shit. What we going to do next? Shut it back down. You know what I'm saying? So, if you're not really a top tier DJ or well-known DJ, bro, you're really not getting called. Especially right now in Chicago, G. It's a lot of DJs that's not eating right now, bro, because of association of your brand. That's why your brand always got to be strong, bro. Strong as hell. Strong as hell. So, you get the call. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, hundred percent. There's your brand. I mean, so yeah, we touched a lot. But lastly, I really just want to touch on, you know, how did you meet you? So how did you, you know, so how did you come across yeah. that? Uh, my dog. Steve like, yeah, like I said, I saw y'all on the ground one day, yeah. and that shit just fucked my head. I'm like, you feel me? Too like, how did that happen yeah, so like, damn quick? Like I said, like niggas knew Juice was up next. If you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know yeah, music, yeah. man. And then so, you know Mike P. You know, you know, you don't yeah. bullshit on the ones or two. So. Right. So it's like it's crazy, bro. But um. It's real crazy, G. Like, but my dog Steve Cannon is the real reason why I even uh, got introduced to Juice. But what kept me in the door was me being Mike P and my brand being strong and me being a good DJ. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like uh, Lil Big was still pushing Free Crag, I think three. Yeah. He's gonna drop it. And uh, he started working with Steve Cannon. Now, him and Steve, I've been working maybe for like, I want to say like two years, maybe even more than that, but I know it's like me seeing it two years, right? So, boom, um, Steve being a photographer, I don't know if you're familiar with Steve. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So, Steve, yeah, he's doing all the videos. He's been on tour shows, yeah. Yeah, like he's been, he's he been like he one just what just like me with Juice, like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, when Bibby and G Money start putting their eyes on Juice, it was kind of like, man, kid's song is really hot. At some point, he's gonna have to start performing it. So originally, at uh, he performed, he did one performance at uh, uh, what's the spot in Hyde Park called? Promontory. Sold out, right? Hoop drinks, my dog. Hoop drinks from HF, DJ for Juice, uh, or just for the show, but DJ for Juice too, technically. Um, and that was that. Hoop drinks got a strong name as well. That's my dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no shade to him, that shit. Yeah. Um, but it ended up being that Steve was just telling Bibby like, man, bro, y'all should really fuck with Mike P. Like, like, man, it's a, just a perfect fit. Mike already doing shit with Taylor Bennett, so he already got that toy shit going around. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like dropping that, dropping that in Bibby's ear. You know what I'm saying? I get a call from Bibby, deep ass voice. Mike P, what up? It's Bibby. I'm like, yeah. He like, yeah, Juice got a show in um, Sacramento. I'm like, okay, cool. Bam, I sent him my little shit. Fly me out there, do the show. But I literally had to fly back the next day. I was still doing the TV show. Right. Um, and that was that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you already knew Bibi though, right? Nah, no, not really, but this is the thing. Though. My brand being so strong, it's like, I, 
me, her, baby, we all kind of know of each other because uh, when you talking about like who's top industry motherfuckers in each lane, they rappers, I'm a DJ. So up there too with me is Oreo, Hoop Dreams, motherfucking Malha, Commando, like all of these DJs, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, you can't say that you ain't heard of the motherfucker yeah. because you a rapper too, you want your shit spun on Juicy. I, I've been with them for a minute. It's like, it's a thing, you know what I'm saying? But it never was like an official type thing, really until I met, until I started DJing for Juice. It was like, all right. Nah, you blood, you, like you locked in, bro. Touch like you. any from over east, I bet, 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 I fuck with you, Mike P. Like, and that was that, bro. But that was how the whole juice shit came to be. And the shit you talking about, you seen us downtown. It was actually shooting an apple. Um, we shooting an apple, but it was on Lower Record Drive or yeah, some shit. Bro. Yeah, yeah, bro, that shit was crazy. And even then, at that moment, bro, I was still was like, damn. Like I didn't know how this shit with juice was gonna go because a lot of these artists. Tell me they about bro, it. they blow, they bro, they hit a quick, like a quick hot strike, bro, and blow, and it was just kind of like, what, what I knew was different with Juice after that Apple shit, cause that was like my third time being around him, bro. No bullshit, like no bullshit. That's like my third time. It was right before we went to Germany and shit. Um, I found myself playing this nigga music, bro, in my car. Yeah, That's yeah. different, bro. Yeah, be doing that with the like, I fuck with Taylor, bro. I was playing some of his music too in my car, bro, because it was certain songs I like. And it was because, too, it was so repetitive. I was playing them on these tours yeah. with him so damn much and at these festivals. But it was like with Juice, it was a little different, bro. It was like, I felt that shit, G. I was like, damn, like, I really like this fucking song. That's, that's it became to a point, bro. Yeah, I'm like, damn, G. Like, this like, shit's shit. solid. And I'm like, oh, it's to the point, bro, that I'm like, I'm sitting up there, and I'm like, yeah, this nigga Juice, he started playing all these unreleased songs. Like, bro, the nigga, I think Vivian and them said this nigga got like some crazy shit, but like 2,000 unreleased songs. Any idea when that's coming? Uh, nah, I think it's gonna be like, I don't know, I think it's gonna be close to December, bro. I think. Well, Christmas, yeah. Yeah, like right. his birthday, Sorry. day before mine's and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like December 2nd. Maybe like don't don't hold it to me. You know these blogs and fans, they look at this shit. They gonna be yeah, it's coming December second. Like you know, but we don't know. But bro, it's so much music that they have to go through though, bro. To push, if they want to push a really great album, bro, you damn have to sit down and listen to everything. But you get so caught up, bro, on one good song that you like personally for yourself. Like gee, he would play shit in the car, bro. That's all Juice would do, bro. Get in the black car with us, black trucks. Oscar, Oscar. Yeah, I need to look up the Bluetooth, Bluetooth. Oscar, Oscar, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Nigga was a freestyle DJ. Yeah, bro. And then he would just go wild, bro. That was the best shit to me was being a sound check to this nigga. I put on an instrumental vote after we get done rehearsing some shit, and he was just saying crazy shit, bro. Shit made me feel like I wanted to start rapping, but then I try that shit, bro. I'd be like, fuck, he thinking of all this shit on his mind, bro. Like, it's crazy, bro. Juice was a real special motherfucker. No, Shit's crazy, sure, bro. Shit's sure. crazy, crazy. Yeah. So, before I get you out of here, any other artists out of the city you, you want to uh, say coming out next? or? Uh, not really. It's hard to say right now. So much you shit just got back. On. I was, you, you just just got, back. got back. There's so much shit going on. Um, of course, like Heavy Steppers, they had a nice wave earlier this year. Slash last year, too. Um, but yeah, man, I think, I think Chicago artists, rap artists in particular, well, fuck. I think Chicago rap artists in particular, um, we gotta get back to getting our own lane. Like at Chicago, like Chicago's a top city. I know this shit because when we travel around the world, people rave and rave about Chicago. They ask me how violent is it, and damn, y'all drill music go crazy. So it's like get back to like real drill music, like create your own, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, type shit, true. like own type vibe, own slang, own words, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know no artists right now off the dome. For sure. That's coming out next out of Chicago. I'm gonna send you some niggas, but for sure. Send me some niggas, G. Cause I ain't heard shit. And it ain't that ain't bad. No, it it's not a negative comment. It's just like I just ain't heard shit. It's just so much shit going on in the world, G. That like music right now to keep it a buck with you. It's not a main. It's not a main fucking focus. Right uh, now, G. Money man said you, your two folks right now should be social justice and get money. See, that's, that's, that's the only. I'm like,